in all sorrow and sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Just like a blind man, I wandered alone. Worries and fears I claimed for my own. And then like the blind man that God gave back his sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow in sight. I was a fool to wander and stray. Straight is the gate and narrows the way. And now I have traded the wrong for the right. What's the next part? There we go. I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more darkness. No more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow in sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. One more time. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. All right, yeah. I'm going to attempt one, and you, I know you know this song. I know you do. If you say you don't, you're lying. We'll see if anybody's lying about it. Oh, yeah. See, 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 you know what I'm talking That's about? That's an old 70s number. Well, I don't know where it comes from, <laughs> when it comes from, but I know we're going to sing it right now. And you might want to get your hands ready for this one, just a little bit. Get a good beat here, let's see. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart, down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy. There you go. Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart, and I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. I'm going to sing that one more time. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. Why? I have the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. Got a tongue twister? I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where, church? Down in my heart. I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Down in my heart, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. It's down in my heart to stay. Yeah, see, I knew you knew that song.
song. Let's see this one. I do believe this was in your blue hymn books, but I apologize. I'm not sure what number. So I probably shouldn't have even told you that, that I believe that's in there. Feel free to look as we sing it, though. Getting to that, <laughs> but you are correct. I'm just thrilled yeah. that I can actually read that. I, me too. Me too. Is it page one? Page one in your hymn books. I hope it's the same one. All right. That's right. The song is called "Holy, Holy, Holy." <laughs> holy, 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 no. song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea, cherubim and seraphim fall. shall be holy 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 though the darkness hide thee though the eye of sinful man thy glory may not see only thou because you're going to sing it with them one day. One of the elders, that's right. Well, if um, I appreciate you singing with me, church. You may be seated. Well, again, welcome, welcome. It's good to see you all. I appreciate those joining us live and joining us later on um, by video elsewhere. Uh, do we have any announcements that we need to share? Just a uh, prayer meeting tomorrow night at 6.30 at the church. Prayer, prayer meeting tomorrow night at 6.30 at the church chapel. Okay, the medical supplies that have been gathered. Okay, so between 12 and 2, th uh, they could use some help moving the, the donations for the medical missions here at the, at the school downstairs out back of the school okay 
Got you. Anybody else? Any announcements to share? Yes, ma'am. Hey, that's great. Yeah, so your sister's feeling better. I'm so glad. It's really great. Okay, Linda Woody having an operation on Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, continue to pray for Devin Anderson. But it sounds like it's it's been some recovery so far, from what I understand. That's great. Yeah. 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 You've been through a lot of that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so do please continue to pray for Devin Anderson. I do have one other comment. Um, I don't know if anybody noticed at the book that uh, on May 20th, it's the 20th anniversary of the Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that we need some assistance moving some things in this building and at the church for some electrical work that's coming up. If you can help with that or, or know how we can, you know, get that done, see Debbie, see, uh, you said it was Mike. Okay. All right. Anybody else before we move on? Okay. Can I have a volunteer or two to help us with the evening tithes and offerings, please? Thank you, Nikki.
You are Lord of creation and Lord of my life. You're Lord of the land and the sea. You were Lord of the heavens before there was time. And Lord of all lords you will be. We bow down and we worship you, Lord. We bow down and we worship you, Lord. We bow down. And we worship you, Lord, Lord of all lords, you will be. I have a song I'd like to share tonight. You're likely familiar with it. If so, please sing it with me. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord of the earth, let us sing power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the
singing with me. At this time, it's my privilege to hand it over to your pastor, Dr. David Cash. All right. Thank you, Candy. Um, from what I understand, there's 26 young people here tonight, and that's more than it was last week, and we're, adults are holding their own. I think there's 31 or 32 of us. They're eventually going to overtake us like it used to in the early days of the church, where they were almost double of, and I'm really, really happy to see that. I could not possibly be happier to see that. We're looking in Revelation chapter 20 tonight. We're getting ready to wind down the study of the book of Revelation. And after we're done, we're going to do a couple of weeks of Bible Q&A, which we're going to get your questions and we're going to attempt to answer them uh, from here. And uh, there are some, and as long as Leela is coming on Wednesday night, she keeps us on our toes because she can ask some hard questions, really hard questions, and I love that. And it makes us get into the word deeper and so forth. Now, in Revelation chapter 20, the battle of Armageddon is over. The Lord returned with the armies of heaven and he defeated the armies of the earth. He captured the Antichrist, or also known as the beast, and the false prophet, and they were thrown in the lake of fire. Now, here we're going to pick up where the very first person of the satanic trinity, what God did with him, the devil. I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. That's really interesting, isn't it? And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. So one of God's angels has the power to grab Satan bodily and put him in chains. And he throwed him in there and said he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season. So the devil had been deceiving the nations of the earth and he's doing it now more than he ever has. And he had been doing that since the beginning of time and now he's going to be stopped for a thousand years. He's put in the bottomless pit and then John made the statement, he said, I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, for the word of God and which had not worshiped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. That is a reward that those who endured the tribulation were given. You got to understand that during the tribulation, either you receive the mark of the beast or you're going to get your head cut off. That's just about the only choice you're going to have if anybody that's alive during the tribulation and they accept Christ, now the church will be gone. But this will be for the Jews and for those people that had not fully understood the gospel or whatever, not those who had heard it and said, maybe later. Not going to do that. Thessalonians explains why you won't get saved during that time. But these are the people that endured it. They refused to take the mark. They refused to accept the leadership of the Antichrist. And they were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, the word of God, and they refused to worship the beast or his image. And now they're going to be permitted to reign with Christ for a thousand years. That's called the millennial. 
Now, there's some things that's going to happen during that thousand years, and it's most of it is written about in the Old Testament. But pretty much Eden will be restored. Let's think about what it was like before man fell. He wasn't here very long before he fell. But everything was perfect. There was no sickness. There was no death. There was no pain. And believe it or not, there was no food chain. I hate those food chain movies when they show some animal running and some bigger animal grabbing him and eat. I hate that. I just do. I hate that. Now, the only thing that I have difficulty with is because I am a rabid carnivore. Uh, is that before man fell, they were actually vegetarians. They were. You know, and, and I, I like, I mean, bless the people that says that they're inventing foods now where they said they can turn plants into beef. But I hate to tell them this, cows have been doing that for thousands of years. Now, if, if they can turn a plant-based country ham, then we're going to talk about that, Okay. Haven't seen that done yet. A lot of things were happening then. There was no danger of animals. You, you didn't have to be afraid of, of wild beasts. A, a friend of mine went camping a few years ago up on the Appalachian Trail up there near Snowden, went across the bridge and was going up the side and he put a tent there. And the crazy thing, all he had was a hunting knife with him. That I wouldn't even drive up there without a gun, not much less camp. And he said that while he was in his tent and he had the fire outside, he saw this gigantic cat walk by his tent. And he said the thing's tail was about that long. And it's a cougar. There are cougars here, by the way. A lot of people don't believe that, but they found them and they're here. And he said, I held my breath. I didn't make a sound. I was hoping he wouldn't rip my tent open. And, and that's the way animals are now. Wild animals are dangerous, but they were not prior to the fall of man. And so when the millennial comes, that is going to be restored. And there'll be no poverty, no struggling to grow food or any kind of thing like that. And there'll be total peace. Isaiah chapter 11 puts it this way in verse number six. It says, the wolf shall also dwell with the lamb. And the leopard shall lie down <clears throat> with the kid and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together. That's, uh, that's wild. To, that lions and, and wolves and leopards will lie down with livestock. Uh, I had chickens, I had guineas, I had turkeys, we had ducks down there, and the coyotes and the raccoons got everything. Can't keep, they can burrow under the ground. They can squeeze through chicken wire. I don't know how they do that. They're that determined, but during the millennium, that won't happen. There won't be anything killing anything. And it said here, and a little child shall lead them. That's pretty cool. A child can go out in the yard at night and not worry about something grabbing it. And it said, and the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like an ox. That is really interesting. No more carnivorous animals. No more carnivorous people either. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. And the suckling child, little baby, shall play on the hole of the asp. That is a cobra snake, pretty much. That's a, that's a type of asp. And the winged child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. These are snakes, poisonous snakes, and a child can play with a poisonous snake like a toy. Again, I will have to have the glorified, not only the glorified body, but I'll have to have the mind of Christ to be able to handle that when I see that. But it's going to happen. And it says, they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea, just like it did prior to the fall of man. 
There, there was no animals injuring each other during that time, no people getting hurt or anything like that. And that is just really, really interesting. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek and the rest shall be glorious. And it says, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord will set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. See, the, the, the tribulation is aimed at the nation of Israel. There are other people affected and the whole world will be affected. But if you read what Daniel said, it's going to be aimed at Israel to restore them, to bring them back because they refused the Messiah when he came the first time, but they won't refuse him the second time. And it, and it said he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. He's already starting to do that now. Did, I a, lot, a lot of people don't know this, but every year thousands and thousands and thousands of people or Jews from all over the world are still returning to Israel. They're going back over there, and some of them, they interviewed them when they got off the plane and said, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I feel like I've got to do this. Well, we know why they've got to do this. God has summoned them back over there. Now, here's another interesting thing that's going to take place during the millennium. And like Pastor Bowley used to say, I don't know why nobody ever preaches on this. You never hear anybody saying anything about this. They don't read it out of the Bible. They skip over it. Because they don't, they, they, I don't know, I reckon it, it makes them feel weird. Like, how can this be? Well, Ezekiel chapter 37, and you really need to read 37, 38, and 39. Ezekiel 37 and verse 24 talks about the millennial. Listen to this. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. And they shall have one shepherd. And they shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. The Lord is going to put David back on the throne in Jerusalem. And if you'll read later, it refers, they use the word king and prince interchangeably, that David will be the prince under the Messiah. In other words, Jesus will be the king, but David will rule under him. Now, you know, that's something for God to bring David back after all that time and put him back on the throne. And wouldn't it be cool to go to Jerusalem and see David and talk to him? I would love to hear some of his stories. I would like to see him. I would like to, to interview him if I could. You know, that is really awesome. He's gonna put him back on the throne. Yeah, and he hears his music and his songs that he wrote and the book of Psalms that he wrote. It's just absolutely amazing. And it said, um, and they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever, and my servant David, here we go, shall be their prince forever. How about that? Isn't that something? Even after the millennium when God builds a new earth, and moreover I will make a covenant of peace with them, it shall be an everlasting covenant with them and I will place them and multiply them and will set up my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle shall also be with them. Yea, I will be their God and they shall be my people. You know, even in heaven there's a tabernacle. There will be a temple or a tabernacle and it said that even the, the, um, the Ark of the Covenant will be in heaven and, the, and there will be a time when people can, when heaven is open and you can see the tabernacle, you can see the Ark of the Covenant and all of that and it will be a reminder forever of, of the things that Jesus did. See, the, you gotta understand the temple, the tabernacles, the Ark of the Covenant, all of those things were symbols of things to come. It was all centered around Jesus. Even the Jewish feast were all centered around the prophecy of Jesus. The Hebrew wedding was nothing more than a prophecy of Jesus and what he would do with his bride, the church. It's just, it's just absolutely amazing. And he said, 
I will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle shall be with them. Yea, I'll be their God. They shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. And so the headquarters of the Messiah himself will be Jerusalem. Uh, a lot of people do not realize what a big deal it was when Trump moved the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. That was a huge, huge biblical prophecy being fulfilled. And, you know, for uh, I don't know how many different presidents talked about doing it, but he actually did it. And he was the man that God wanted in there to do these things. And he... and. Uh, and and I've, and my mother always told me, even when I was a little kid, and I didn't understand why she said it until I started studying on my own. She said that God is good to America because America is good to Israel. And she said, always remember that, son. She said, always pray for them. And she said, in the moment that America stops helping Israel, God's going to take his hand off America. And she's right. She was right. So the headquarters of the Messiah himself will be in Jerusalem. Let's get back to verse 5 in chapter 20 of Revelation. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Those who died unsaved were in hell. And they did not come back out and because it wasn't time for their final judgment. But the ones who did, see, there's several different resurrections, several different harvests. I don't have time to go into all of that, but you'll see it as you study along. All right. Then it says this, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. That's us too. That is all of us. Those that have died in Christ will be resurrected, their bodies will be resurrected. The second death has no power over people who die knowing Jesus. The second death has no power over us now. You know, and, and, and it's a wonderful thing to know that as a Christian, you're only gonna, if, if once, you're only gonna die once, and maybe not even that. But, but you're never going to have the second death, which is an eternal spiritual death. All right, blessed and holy, is he that hath part in the first resurrection on which the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. We are all going to have something to do during the millennium. We all get a job. We will be kings and priests and rulers and, and everybody's going to be busy doing something that is saved during that time. Believe it or not, there will be a large population of people in the millennium that are not saved. They made it through the, the battle of Armageddon. They were the remnants of it, and they move into the millennial time, and we rule over them. Will they behave themselves? Yes, they will until the end of that time. But there are still people that did not know the Lord that goes into that time. Now, that's, again, another deep subject. And plus, during the millennium, huh? Yeah, and plus, during the, I right, think about this, during the millennium, those who survived the Battle of Armageddon will have children. Uh, not the church, but those who survived that, and there will be there will be dozens of generations born during that time also, and not all of them are going to personally know the Lord. They will obey him. They will come up to Jerusalem when they're ordered to, but you will find at the end of the thousand years that they were not saved. There were a number of them. Now, when the thousand years are expired, now remember Eden was restored. It was peaceful. Everything was really, really great. Um, there was no wars, no poverty or anything like that. And there was nobody to tempt them to do evil. You got to remember that. Satan has locked up. And what a wonderful world it would be to see him locked up. You know, we could all breathe for once. 
you know, let, let's just think about it. Look, look at what we have to deal with right now because Satan is in the world. Whenever God asks him, because the Bible says there is a time when they come and present themselves, the angels come and present themselves before God. And it said, and among them was Satan. And God asked Satan, where'd you come from? And he said, from walking to and fro through the earth. A lot of people think that Satan is down in hell sitting on a throne. That ain't true. Never has been true. He has always been on this earth until the time he's thrown in the bottomless pit. Remember, he was in heaven. He was thrown out of heaven for sin, and he was on this earth. And he'd been on this earth ever since then. And all he has done is create chaos. Now, I know a lot of y'all have to deal with a lot of stuff in your life, but wouldn't it be nice to have one whole day without chaos? Wouldn't it be great? And, and wouldn't it be nice just to have one whole day without people being ignorant? <laughs> shall I continue? Yes, I shall. People lying about you. People trying to hurt you. People doing this and people doing that. The, the, the police would have a break for one whole day. They wouldn't have to arrest anybody for doing anything because they hadn't done nothing stupid. And there would be no crime. There would be, um, oh my goodness, just one day. Now you picture a thousand years of that. That's nice. That's nice. And the whole time he's locked up, there is peace on earth. And people are not living in chaos. Yes, but see, you will not, there's two different groups of people. There are the, those who were saved during the tribulation or those already saved with the church and then those who made it through the tribulation, the nations that they didn't all die. And so the Christians will be the ones ruling and reigning over them during that time. I'm assuming that because the Lord is reigning from Jerusalem and David is in Jerusalem and this is a big planet that he will give us different possessions of places to rule. Think about that. Where would you like to rule at during that time in answer to her question? Mm -hmm. That's true. If he gives me one though, I want Ocracoke Island. And not let no fairies run to it anymore. Just leave me alone. All right. Okay. But we will, the bride of Christ, we will all have special duties, special blessings. It's, but we will all have something that we will be doing. All right. Now, when the thousand years are loosed, or expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Now, this is what he's going to do. He will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Now, this is why a lot of people get confused with Ezekiel 37 through 39 and Revelation 20 because it looks very similar to the same battle, but it isn't. He's using the same areas, the same peoples, but the outcome is different on it. And so this time he's going to gather another army together Gog and Magog, and gather them together for battle. And it says this time the number of whom is of the sand of the sea. Now, then we're going to find out at the end of the millennium just how many people were behaving but were not saved. This is when they're going to show their true colors as to what they are, and they're going to easily be deceived because they are not saved and they're going to follow Satan, and they're going to actually think they can defeat the, the Christians again. They think they can defeat the Lord and the Christians. They really believe that. You know, and we get a little shocked at the boldness of the wicked people sometimes of this earth, and, and how, how do they dare think they could get away with that? Well, because they've been fooled by Satan. Look at what goes on now. Just in this country alone, at people that are very 
very vile, very wicked, and very bold about it. And they'll in, freely admit what they're doing and they, don't, they know you're not gonna do anything about it. That's how they've got it in their mind. And so at that time, that's not gonna be a surprise either. And so they're gonna gather together an army and it said they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed or circled the camp of the saints about millions and millions and billions of people apparently and the beloved city. But this time it's going to be a different thing. Now if you look at the battle of Gog and Magog out of Ezekiel, you can see how they were defeated. And this one is going to be a different way that they're going to be defeated. It said fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. There didn't even need to be a battle. When they got up and circled the camp of the saints, fire comes down and just, that's it, fries them, devours them. Uh, the fire that came down from heaven when Elijah prayed, not only evaporated the water in the trench, but it burned the rocks up and just they evaporated too. It took everything when it did that. That's a pretty hot fire. And that's what's gonna come down and burn everybody that is coming to attack. Okay, now, here we go. Here's the ultimate end. The devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, listen carefully, where the beast and the false prophet are. That is in the present tense. And that means, that is forever. They had been in that lake of fire for a thousand years already. And now the devil is going to join them. That will be the end of the false satanic trinity. Finally, and they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. There's a movement out now that is, uh, I don't know what that was. There's a movement out now that, uh, that people are teaching that hell is not forever or the lake of fire is not forever. It's only temporary. And I don't know when that got started, but it's actually a very popular movement. They're, uh, they're even on social media advertising the book and all that, and they can advertise their book, but this book right here says that it's forever and ever. Uh, it's unpleasant and it's horrible to think about, but it said they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And it refers to people that when they are unsaved that they are going to the lake of fire that was prepared for Satan and his angels, but those who choose to follow Satan will follow him right in to that lake of fire. Now here's the, the judgment, the great judgment. I saw a great white throne, and this is at the end of that millennial period, and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. No, he, he is so powerful that everything tries to flee from him. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Now you need to understand the church does not participate in this throne. There are two throne judgments, two different ones. The one for the church, the one for Christians is called BEMA, the Bema seat of judgment. That is what, um, uh, and people that understood Roman Olympic contest understood. At the end of the contest, the judge of the Olympic Games would sit on the Bema seat, which was a throne, and the contestants would line up and they would give out little crowns that would go on their head for the achievements that they got. That was for their reward for what they did while they were uh, in the contest. That's the first throne of judgment, and Christians will go through that. He talks about that, uh, Paul talks about that at length. The second judgment is the great white throne of judgment. And that is where all of the lost are brought before this throne. And we, will we see it? Yes, we will. We'll be there. You know, I can't help but think of the, the victims, uh, particularly the millions and millions and millions of babies 
that have been slaughtered by these devils from Planned Parenthood and all over, and now they're shipping money back overseas to kill babies. Biden is doing. They're so obsessed with the worship of Molech that they're paying for it, but with our money. And you know what? Those children, they'll be grown, but they'll be standing there in the judgment, and they're going to watch. And every one of those people that were involved in that are going to be brought before the great white throne. Makes you wonder how they'll do it, who they'll bring next. Can you hear uh, the angel say, Lord, who, who do you want next? Who do you want brought here? And I could hear him probably say, bring me Adolf Hitler. And he will be judged because of what he did to God's chosen people. Then maybe he'll say, bring me Madeline Mary O'Hare, the great atheist who is now a believer after she died. And she will be judged for taking prayer out of schools and destroying so many souls. And one leader after another that did all these horrible things and people that turned their back on God and, and, and seduced other people to follow Satan. One by one, they'll be brought before that throne until finally, you know, I, I can hear God say, bring me Satan. And you know what? Every one of them, according to the book of Philippians, will bow and admit that Jesus is Lord. They'll do, every one of them will do that. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. I wonder what, what books are they talking about? Well, this has 66 of them in it. And I've always been taught by some of the much greater preachers than me and much smarter preachers than me that that's the